last hours of the negotiations and uh, with things feeling really chaotic and, and uh, I just wanted to say a few things about how it's been in the negotiations and what really has been up for grabs. Uh, we're in basically a starting point of these Bali negotiations. Uh, contrary to public expectations, there's not going to be a final deal struck here, but what's really important is to get the framework right for the next two years of negotiations, because if that doesn't happen, then there really won't be the urgent action on climate change that's required. So what they've been talking about here is the way to move forward. And to do that has required careful negotiations of a whole lot of uh, smaller issues, but a focus particularly by ministers when they arrived a couple of days ago of the really big political issues. And it's those big political issues that are really being contentious here. Uh, it's particularly been the United States that has essentially tried to orient the whole agenda towards their own kind of self-interest and they haven't been prepared to come on board with some of the, uh, the progressive negotiations. They've been backed by Canada uh, and uh, Japan uh, and to some extent Russia. Uh, and what we've seen is that, that this kind of unwillingness to move has meant that what we're facing is, as a, a deal from Bali is significantly um, less, less kind of um, progressive and less uh, urgent than, than we need it to be. Because we really, we really need a, a, a kind of quite a fundamental change and the lifestyles of people living in the rich countries if we're going to meet this challenge of, of climate change. We also need support for developing countries for themselves to start this process of a transition to a low carbon economy. So, so, but, but most of those countries don't need punitive targets. They, they need help with being able to address these issues. So there's been um, lots of fights over different parts of the agenda, literally with hours to go. We're not sure how the final deal is, is going to shape out, but the way it's looking is that on one hand there's going to be some negotiations that go forward, but on the other it actually doesn't meet the real urgency that's required from these climate change negotiations. The Oxfam team here has worked fabulously well inside the negotiations as well as outside. We've been lobbying delegates, we've been doing uh, analysis of, of the negotiating documents, we've been talking to the media, trying to orient the coverage in a way that describes a real challenge here and assigns a responsibility for acting on climate change to those who need to move first and need to move furthest. So it's been uh, a really intense 10 or 11 days. There are a lot of people here who haven't had much sleep, uh, and it's the last fraught hours of the, the Oxfam teams here uh, doing whatever we can in the last few hours to, to support the progressive positions, preparing how we're going to react to the final deal, uh, and uh, um, I think it's been a really important week for Oxfam in entering this climate change work, working with allies ar around the world to be able to try and stress the importance of this issue and the need for governments to really step up to what has been termed the greatest political challenge of our generation, as well as, of course, the greatest strategic challenge facing our environment and poverty.